Hello, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Clark bringing you our first reading lesson in our first unit. Remember, our unit is crossing between cultures, all about immigration or moving um, from place to place. All right, today, our learning goal is I can comprehend fictional text by identifying character feelings. So, remember, comprehend just means understand, right? Understand what the text is trying to tell you. I can understand fictional text, and remember fiction is a story, so I can understand stories by identifying character feelings, how a character is feeling, and probably how that character's feelings are changing. Today we're really going to be using, your, remember we always are using that visualizing strategy, we're always making connections, but really today we're focusing on looking for contrasts or contradictions, okay? <clears throat> and we'll talk about what that is. Why do we need to look at, for character feelings? Well, a story is all about the character and what the character does and what the character feels and what the character says. So understanding how a character is feeling and how those feelings are changing can really give us clues to the theme or the problem of the story and really tell us how that character is developing. Now remember, authors use patterns of power. And the pattern that we're looking for today or this week is called contrasts and contradictions. Now these authors use these patterns so that they give us clues to what's going on in the story. They help us comprehend. Okay, so when we think about the word contrast, hmm, where have you heard that before? Yeah, we've heard that with compare and contrast, right? When we do the double bubble or a Venn diagram. And the contrast part is always the difference. So today we're looking for when a character's feeling something that's either different from what they were feeling or maybe different than what you would expect the character to feel. Okay? And I'm going to read to you today from an excerpt, so this is a little portion from a novel called Escape from Saigon. This is my I do, and your job is to take notes. So remember how we take notes. I've linked that video in your Google Classroom if you're not sure or need some support. Um, <clears throat> and I'm also going to show you um, or underline different um, contrasts and contradictions, things that go ah to me. So please make sure you're uh, taking notes and really thinking of what is Mrs. Clark doing to look for those character feelings and how is she using that contrast and contradiction to help her. All right, here we go. Ah. All right, I'm thinking of character feelings. How is the character feeling? Why is the character feeling that? How are they changing? And the clues that I'm going to use today are those contrasts and contradictions. So, Escape from Saigon. A social worker greeted him and offered him a chair. He sat down as she studied some papers on her desk. She looked up. I have some good news for you, Long. All right, friends, I'm already visualizing. I've got a picture of an office, kind of just like a white office with a desk kind of scattered with papers. And uh, this, I feel like this is a friendly looking woman. She's a social worker and she has good news. So she's probably smiling. And I'm seeing this boy named Long sitting in a chair. He held his breath, trying to concentrate on what she was saying. Then he heard the words, we have a family who would like to adopt you. So again, pause and think. He held his breath trying to concentrate. When someone's doing that, um, I'm making connections to my own life. Like when I'm holding my breath, I'm kind of anticipating something, right? And I know it's good news. So I am going to underline good news here because I think that's an important piece. And it seems that I made a connection here. I was visualizing up here and I made a connection. So I think he's feeling um, anticipation possibly excitement. Um, 
and he's going to get adopted. Long thought his ears must be playing tricks on him, but she repeated her words, assuring him it was so. They live in a little town called West Liberty, Ohio, and it's you they want. I think we can have all the paperwork done in time for you to leave next June. Long's heart was pounding so hard he could hardly hear his own voice when he asked in a whisper, Do I have a new name? All right, so, again, the author is giving me clues here. Long's heart was pounding so hard he could hardly hear his own voice. So his heart pounding so hard, that gives us a clue to how he's feeling. When your heart is pounding so hard, you're maybe either scared, you're maybe worried, you're maybe excited, happy. And to me, this seems like a happy situation, right? He's getting adopted. Um, and so then he asked this question that kind of, ding, 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 gave me a contradiction. Do I have a new name? Hmm. I'm wondering why he would have a new name. Maybe he doesn't want a new name. Let's keep reading. You do. It's Matthew. They want to call you Matt. Hmm. Okay. We have to go to the second page now. Matt. Another strange American name. He thought for a moment. He had always been long. Could he become someone else? Matthew, Matt. Finally, he took a breath. That will be okay, he said. Very interesting. So I made another line because he says that will be okay. To me, that's a little contradictory because he also was saying here another strange American name. His, he had always been long. I think this is an important piece. He had always been long. So it's almost like he's changing his identity, right, to now be American. And he finds that to be okay. To me, uh, it seems a little contradictory. It seems like I would want to stay with who I was. However, that's what this character is feeling. And that's the important piece. So now I want you to think about why do you think Long's okay with changing his name to Matt? And if we think about all the visualizations we've had and the connections we've had here, mm, I think you can pretty much understand that Long is okay to change his name to Matt because he is excited, right? He's holding his breath, his heart is pounding, and he's excited that he gets to be adopted. And I think he's ready for this change um, from wherever Saigon might be, right? And he's ready to now move to America and have a family. And I think the idea of him having a family is much better um, than trying to keep that old identity of his name long. So, ah, uh, there's my I do. Hopefully you took a couple notes throughout that. Feel free to go back and rewatch anything that you need and go ahead and click on your assignment for today. Finish that assignment and we will discuss more about character feelings tomorrow when I see you in person. Have a great day.